Welcome back, Amfishers. I'm Bill Jajopoulos, the host of the Amfish Fishing Vlog series. Uh, this vlog is, um, I've actually had people ask me while I'm fishing, um, so I decided to, uh, to shoot this video. And it's um, just pretty much, uh, you know, we get, we get used to uh, baits, whether they're spoons, crankbaits, uh, spinner baits, that sort of stuff. Um, and we get used to using them just one way, which is, again, fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but there's times where, like I said, this, this video is, I'm trying to think of a, how I would title it, probably just say using, um, using soft plastic uh, tips. And what I mean by tips is I've got a, uh, just a William spoon here, silver spoon. And what I've been doing, because I'm out here looking for the early fall, sorry, just adjusting my kayak, the early fall pike and musky. So, you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. I've got uh, these large, rather large swim baits here. And what I've done with this is I'll take the one hook, which is obviously facing that way, and I'll just thread this hook through. Now I've made that three and a half, four inch spoon a bait that is longer than my forearm, probably from the tip of my hand to the middle of my forearm. Um, and now that becomes a really enticing, especially in this later season when you have a big gorging fish. I actually just caught a nice big pike, a nice fat pike in this bay um, on a spinner bait. But just doing stuff like this, uh, again, most people may never try that. Um, but this spoon, you know, goes through the water and it's doing its action. And now I've got this big bait that I'm pulling. And the, the beauty of this one is, because the spoon doesn't dive too uh, too deep, when I reel in, if I actually reel in quickly, I can skirt, uh, skip this bait across the surface of the water because it's adding some buoyancy to it. Um, it is pretty heavy, so you'll want to have it on a, on a decent uh, casting rod. Um, but like I said, just tip stuff up. I've got another little example here. It's just a skirted little bucktail with a willow blade. And and use it as is, which is fine. It'll catch fish. If the fish are into that color that day. But why not get a little creative? Expose one of the hooks and thread on just enough so it goes through the bend and now it's sitting in the middle of that treble hook. Much different look. One, it's a bigger bait. I've added uh, a good three, four inches to that bait. But now it's got some flash, it's got some wiggle. Um, you can actually see that tail going there in the wind and the skirt. So once this all spins, um, you know, a bait like this, just the, the skirted bucktail as itself, will catch fish. Uh, but now I've got the scent, I've got a salted uh, curly tail in the bottom, uh, three and a half, four inch. Uh, it adds that little bit of action, adds the scent trail in the water. Uh, and again, it's an overall uh, bigger bait itself. So when a fish actually bites down and they may actually bite down more on the body of the bait, they'll feel that soft plastic and they'll probably hold on. I mean, the pike I caught here on my spinner bait, uh, even though I had them unhooked, was still chewing on the actual uh, uh, boogie tail uh, trailer I had on the back. Uh, I wouldn't let it go, chewed it up. I had to put a new one on. But that's what happens. You add that scent and all of a sudden now you've got, um, you've got a trail Every time you cast out, you've got a trail following your bait. Uh, and again, I've added uh, another three, four inches in size to that bait. So try stuff like this. Um, you may want to do it on a spinner bait. You can try it on spoons. Like I said, on spoons are great. On uh, bucktail stuff like this, uh, even if you have bigger bucktails, musky bucktails, the MEPS ones, uh, I use a bunch of the big MEPS ones. Um, fantastic, I'll tip them up. You know, if I'm using a black and white uh, bucktail, I'll tip it up with either black or white uh, curly tail grub. Uh, again, silver spoon matches pretty much close to this bait. If I wanted to go something uh, closer, potentially closer, would be I can go blue on blue. And if I wanted to go even more lavish, I could use a spoon like that and hook this. And now I've got an even longer bait. Um, but just, you know, don't get used to just trying stuff and using stuff the way we use them out of the packages. Again, there's nothing wrong. All these spoons, you know, this spoon works on its own, no problem. This spoon works on its own. Uh, but the purpose is just get in, you know, try it. Tip some of these um, these baits, you know, bucktails uh, and spoons. 
and tip them with soft plastics. Like I said, they can be very, very productive. Uh, there'll be days where all of a sudden this one's working and then it stops working. So I might think it's the size of the bait uh, and I'll take the, the soft plastic off, the curly tail off, I'll throw just the bucktail itself and then I'm catching fish again. So, you know, it does change throughout the day, but I mean, look at the look of this thing. This is just, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty flat out insane if you ask me, but it's, uh, it's a great spoon, just a silver flash in front of it. And when you reel this in, this thing's just kicking away and flailing away. It actually looks like it's either injured and scurrying away or it's just, um, you know, a dying uh, bait fish, especially if I run it closer to the surface of the water. So, again, that was the purpose of this, uh, this vlog here is just to uh, just try things outside of the box. Uh, you know, you may be in a fishing store and someone's not going to tell you to, to tip a spoon with a, a live minnow, as example, if I'm jigging in deeper water for smallmouth or pickerel. I may just put a, a live minnow on uh, maybe one or two of these hooks. Uh, but you may not get that information in a fishing store, and that's why I'm kind of jumping outside of my normal videos and trying to come up with the stuff. You know, I've been doing this for years, uh, especially on bucktails, for years and years. And um, I'm trying to give all that information out to everybody out there. I know people ask me uh, ask me a lot of questions, uh, but again, there's just a, a really cool looking um, bait in line with uh, the big feed that I'm going to be uh, throwing out here uh, for these big pike and musky that are feeding. Uh, you know, fish now late in fall are sorry in early and late in fall are their biggest, so this this will match up with uh, you know other forage that they might be feeding on. But, um, you know, just try it. Like I said, these are just uh, nothing really specific. These are just the Bass Pro Salted uh, uh, Curly Tail Grub. These are uh, Lunker City, quite a big size. Find these in the musky section. Uh, it's big fin, I believe it is called uh, Fin Fish. It's a 10 inch. So there you go, a 10 inch bait with another four or five inch spoon, close to a 15 inch bait, um, which is really cool. Like I said, you can utilize this if you have uh, the big predator fish like I do in this lake and I'm fortunate enough to have them here uh, they'll go for stuff like this I actually had a really small bass try and hit this it was hilarious uh, I didn't actually get hooked but the bass is probably uh, maybe as long as my bait here 10 inches uh, so that was kind of funny I wish I actually caught it on it because I wanted to catch it on video and uh, just to show you how sometimes even the smallest fish will go after a really big bait but uh, keep it in mind guys like I said tip up some of these baits these spoons uh, spinner baits uh, bucktails uh, just try it uh, and you know you'll you either start catching a bunch of fish that way or you'll take the soft plastic off and start catching fish and then it'll stop and then you'll go back to putting the soft plastic on and you might catch some more fish so um, I'll leave it there guys thanks for tuning in hope you found this vlog helpful and I'll see you at my next video vlogs